Hi everybody, Mark Thurston here, your multifamily investing expert. And I want to welcome you back to another episode. Um, in this particular episode, we are going to talk about how to attract and retain the very best tenants. But before we get started, I want to remind you, if you like today's content, please give us a thumbs up and share with your family and friends. So you've got an apartment and you want to attract the very best tenants and hopefully retain those tenants. So I think the first thing we need to start with is what is your definition of the best tenant? My definition of the best tenant is one who honors the rental agreement and respects the property. So ask yourself, what is your definition of that best tenant? Now in every neighborhood, regardless of the price point, you have your best tenants and you have your worst tenants. Which one are you attracting? Would you like to improve your tenant quality? If the answer is yes, I'm going to share with you three of the biggest mistakes that I see landlords make, and I'm going to give you one incredible solution on how to improve the attractiveness to the best tenants. So I'm going to start by saying today that I've got two landlords that I probably talk to four or five times a year. In every conversation, it's almost like Groundhog's Day. The conversation always ends up with them telling me about how they can't seem to attract very good tenants. And yet, I will tell you that they break the very first rule that I'm gonna, or mistake that I'm gonna point out here. And that is how attractive is your curb appeal of your property? Because you only get a chance to make a first impression one time. And obviously, if the tenant chooses to view your property, you know they're comfortable in the location. So if they're comfortable in the location, now your job is to get them from their car into your apartment unit. And it's gonna start with how does your property show up front? And what is that initial impression that they're gonna get when they pull up in front of your building? So you want it to be inviting, you want it to be have some color to it, and you want it to look well kept like you are a landlord that cares about your building and you care about your tenants. That's the message you want to convey to these tenants. Take a look at any of the institutionally owned buildings in your area. Look how they present themselves. You want to mirror or copy that, but obviously you want to do it within a reasonable budget. There's no reason to spend you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on landscaping or maintenance of landscaping, you can certainly do it within a budget, but it needs to be well kept, it needs to be inviting, um, and it needs to show that you care. And to give you a great example, I, I recently sold a building. It was in an older area of town, and, and this seller had told me several times, he goes, ah, I have just horrible tenants. And so when I pulled up to this property, this particular neighborhood was, was structured to where you go from the street to the curb, the gutter, um, then you have this mow strip, then you have the sidewalk, and then you have what should have been the lawn, and then flower beds and building. And when I pulled up to his particular building, the first two things that jumped out at me was the mow strip along this, this stretch of road, as well as his grass were either non-existent, dead, or was full of weeds. And in addition to being full of weeds, it was also completely covered in dog feces. And so I'm going, wow, not a very good first impression. Then as I looked beyond where the grass used to be to what is the garden area around the building, he only had one plant that was so overgrown, it was blocking part of the building. Probably had not been trimmed in at least over 10 years. Then you look at the building itself, and although 90% of the building was stucco, requiring minimal maintenance, the 10% that faced the street was with a wood siding. And the wood siding was just completely falling apart because it probably has not received a coat of paint in at least 10 to 15 years. And this was the first impression that he was making to his residents. Now, what does that say? It says, I don't care what my property looks like. So why should you as a resident care? And obviously, those were the type of residents that he was attracting. These people didn't care, and as a result, he had poor residents. So the first issue is the property needs to show well. Now your next two things that I run across or mistakes that I encounter, um, 
once I move to the insides, mistake number one is you run across units where the landlord will tell you, oh, I've got a vacant unit, come take a look at it. You go to take a look at it, you walk inside, and what's the first thing that you notice? There are dead cockroaches along the baseboards. You know, they can be in the living room, they can be in the bedrooms, they can be in the kitchen, but you see these little dead carcasses. Now, yeah, it's great that they're dead, but what does that tell a prospective resident? One, it tells you there's a bug problem even when nobody's living there. The second thing it tells them, you don't care enough to clean up those bugs when you're trying to present the unit in its best light. So the second mistake I find, which is along those same lines, is you open the door and what do you find in the middle of the living room? A giant bleach stain. Or worse than that, you'll find a hole in the middle of the flooring. Now, once again, what message is that conveying to your residents? It says, I don't care as a landlord. And I probably don't expect you to care because you're willing to live in this type of environment. You know, as a landlord, I want the tenant that walks into that situation and says, nope, not for me. I'm not living here. I want them to have pride. I want those tenants to feel proud of where they live. I want them to make it their home. I want them to invite their family and friends to come visit them because they're proud of where they live. Not that they're ashamed of it, because when they're ashamed of it, they're not going to respect your property and they're probably not going to pay the rent on time or even pay the rent. So that's what I'm looking for in a unit um, is I want to present it in its best light on the exterior and its best light on the interior. Now, I told you I'm going to share with you a tip. So I have a friend who has been in the property management business for probably 35 or 40 years. And she is a field supervisor. And one of the requirements that she asks of all of her on-site managers is, when you finish prepping a unit, you have to do the toilet test. Now what's the toilet test? So the toilet test is one where she goes in or has her manager go into the bathroom sit down on the toilet and sit there for two to three minutes and just look around. Because what she points out is on moving day, when you're moving into a unit, the only break that the female gets to take is when she goes to the bathroom. And she's gonna have one of two experiences when she's sitting on that toilet. She's gonna sit there and feel very proud and happy about the choice she makes. Or she's going to sit there and look around and be horrified at the filth that she sees when she's sitting eye level with the countertops and she's staring at the bathtub or the shower or the baseboards. And her goal as a property supervisor, she wants those residents to have a great experience. She wants them to feel positive about making a wonderful choice. And the bathroom is one of the most easily overlooked areas when it comes to cleaning. And she knows that's going to set the tone for the entire apartment experience. So next time you prep a unit, when you finish, do the toilet test. So I hope that this has been some valuable information for you today. And I hope that you can implement these suggestions on your own units. And I wish you the very best in getting the wonderful and best tenants that are possible in your very market. So thank you very much. If you like today's content, please hit the subscribe button and share with your family and friends. Thank you very much and we'll see you on the next video.